Senate Church is welcome anyway. <laughs> uh, Father Jim Graff, a uh, retired priest, um, and um, Father Ben is here. I don't know if any of you have seen him. You say, what the heck is this visiting priest here? He is under quarantine by his doctor because he's undergoing surgery tomorrow. So we want to remember him in our Mass this morning, uh, especially if I'll mention him in the prayer of the faithful. Uh, but it's a, it's a joy to be here. Um, let me tell you something about the reading. Uh, Jeremiah is a prophet. This is 586 is when Israel, is when Jerusalem fell. And um, um, so this is before 586, 586 years before Christ. And he's met up. He's, he's been at this. He was called by God as a very young person. And he was trying to get the word of God out to the king, to the people around the king, to the people. And, you know, they just brushed him off. And you'll hear this frustration. And finally, he just says, I quit. I, I, I'm not going to do it anymore. Now, he doesn't say it that bluntly, but that poetically is said in that first reading. But God comes back to him, and that, that'll be part of the novel. Uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't let, God doesn't let us quit easily. Uh, sometimes we back away from our, our responsibility. The gospel, Jesus is explaining for the first time in Matthew's gospel, I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem, suffer, and die, and rise on the third day. And Peter would have nothing of that. Peter rejected that immediately. And, and Jesus has to get very harsh with him and say, Peter, get behind me, Satan. I mean, he calls him Satan. That's, that's a very strong so to know the readings you know I mean, some of you might have read them already uh, so if you said well I know that father I know that you don't have to tell me there's some of us who don't read the readings before so I hope that you found that helpful and then that, that gets us started on our our, 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 um, our song reading we introduce the first song we got uh, number 26 on the back of this left okay God, you are always with us. You are with us where two or three are gathered. And so we say to you this morning, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And to our God this morning, we say glory to God in the highest, and no earth is peace to be born of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, our Lord and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's bow our heads now for a moment of silent prayer together. God of might and the giver of every good gift, Put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus began to show his disciples that he must that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer greatly with the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, that no such thing shall happen to you. And Jesus turned and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny him or himself and take up his or her cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his or her life will lose it. But whoever loses his or her life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world to forfeit his or her life? Or what can one give in exchange for his or her life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to their conduct. The Gospel of our God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the data in here, I don't know, can't remember the woman's name, can't remember the city, but uh, they lived in town, and in town, couldn't remember the town, the city, but their house, the way she described it, was up close to the street, and she couldn't let her kids go out and play because of that, it wasn't safe. And it was a three bedroom, one bath, uh, her husband was working at home, she was working at home, her daughter had just gone back to school, uh, and uh, didn't mention the middle son and then the youngest six-year-old uh, that she had a six-year-old and um, she was working and had a Zoom meeting with her place that she worked with and she was working out of her home that was a very important Zoom meeting she kept getting bumped off getting bumped off getting bumped off it's a matter of this you know I've got to have this Wi-Fi I've got to have this in my home I've got to have it working, functioning. Uh, so she called her husband and said, honey, I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. You've got about another 10 minutes. And the daughter said, well, I, I don't, I'm doing math. I, I can't get off of this right now. I've got to stay on what I'm doing. Well, why are we bumped? Well, Mama getting bumped off. Uh, goes in the living room, and the night, night before, her little six-year-old son had taken all the cushions and built a porch, you know, and, and had a blankets over it and had a little door in there. She goes down there and looks in, and here he's on his iPad and bumping her off. And she grabs that blanket and grabs that iPad and she goes in the closet. She closes the door and locks it and sits down in the darkness of the closet to view her, 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 her Zoom. Now, the report was about selling and buying homes. I won't even get into that. But the story touched her. Because that's a different type of suffering that we have. We love our family, we love our kids, but and we love our grandkids, because I know some of you are probably caring for them. But it's frustrating. It's frustrating when we just live with that kind of togetherness and it can get like fingers on a chalkboard. Boy, does that date me. But anyway, you know, you know what I mean. All right. And so Jeremiah had a different type of suffering. 
there, there, was a, there, there was a different type of suffering that he had. He was trying to be faithful to God. And if he was just brushing him off, King wouldn't, wouldn't even give him time so that he could talk to him. And, and others, even his family members. And, and it wouldn't say that he was exhausted, that he was fatigued. And he was tired from year after year of trying to be a faithful prophet. He wasn't listened to. And that, that really was getting to him. And in his frustration, then, he said, I'm going to step aside. I'm not going to talk anymore. And maybe in my not talking, then, then people will, will not despise me as much as they reject me as much as they do now. So he said, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Well, you know, we can have those thoughts, and God knows our thoughts. God knew what Jeremiah was saying, even if it was only to himself. And I know, even though he was, that wasn't going to be God's response to let me, I'm ahead of myself, but stay with us. Father Hensel is a priest. He's a, 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 a Benedictine uh, monk over here across the Ohio River at St. Minor. Uh, he's a teacher and he's a scripture guy, the doctor of the scripture. He's, he's a brilliant guy. He's, he's just so good to be with and so alive and so insightful. And he sends out a, a, a paper, uh, his commentary. He, he writes commentary every week on the, the reading, of not just the gospel, but all three, all three readings. He says this, quote, Jeremiah admits in this passage that God proved to be too strong for him. The people of Israel must hear from him the word of God. Must hear Jeremiah, the word of God. This is what I have sent you for, uh, Jeremiah. I will be with you. You're not alone in this, but you have got to speak. And Jeremiah couldn't turn God down. And that mother, living on top of one another, even though the story was about home buying and all, and I'll tell you right now, they went on ahead and bought a home. Uh, further out, there's more land on a cul-de-sac. She was describing it, and, and then they put the bed down, but they, they, they couldn't close on that, sold their own home, had to get out of that home and live in an apartment, which was even worse than, than, than her present condition, until they could get that home sold, and, you know, the money worked out, and so they were a month or so of, of even worse conditions. But she said, oh, it was next week, and at that time when this closed out the story, she had a week ago before she was going to get into this, not a brand new home, but a new home for, for, for their family. Um, so it's not, you know, God's standards are not always ours. Our, our standards are not always God's. You know, uh, Peter, that, that's not what, in the gospel, Peter had this Messiah coming in on a white stallion, and his military behind him, and chariots, and horses, and spears, and and where we are, that's what he thought the Messiah, that's what he thought Jesus would be. And besides that, he was a healer. He could heal wounded soldiers, and da 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 No, Peter, that's not what the Messiah is. That's not what Jesus, that's not how Jesus, the Son of God, saw this, and saw himself. And that was painful. For Peter, when he got called by Jesus, listen, Satan, get behind him. I mean, he that was a serious put down by Jesus to, 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 to Peter. But Jesus was saying, to be the Messiah, to be faithful, I'll go to Jerusalem, suffer greatly, be killed, and be raised on the third day. First time for him, Jesus in Matthew's gospel to explain, hey. This is who I am. This is what's going on. This is what life is about. Well, how many of us, of us can identify with Jeremiah and, Jer and, 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 and Peter? It isn't that we, that we identify and say we like suffering. Uh, for those people at home, I'm trying to look at them right now for a moment. Uh, they're not here. How many of them would like to be here and don't feel comfortable with this whole coronavirus? There's a pain and a suffering there. Um, when I don't have masks, I, I'm only, this is my, only my second weekend away, 
since March, March 15th was the last time I had a public mass. Boom, the whole thing hit. And I started having mass in my home and my next door neighbor and another uh, woman, nurse, nurse, woman friend, and two of them taught me how to do Zoom, how to be the host. So you can do Zoom pretty easily. Well, of course, I say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I went away once, but well, you saw how bad it was for me. I mean, it took me two or three weeks, and I don't know why they were driving me crazy, and I was driving them crazy. But to be the host, you have to go through a whole series of things and get everybody on. But anyway, that's all I've been doing so, since 15 of March is, is mass. And then I take Eucharist out to seven or eight families. Uh, I'm on a lake complex, and I, I take Eucharist out to those who are still receiving. I've got, a, I've got an aunt up in. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. She turned 100 in May, and then ASOC has been on there uh, except for the, about two or three weeks ago when I was at the parish. And then, uh, told I had family on there, and I had other people at the lake, and I, you know, just all sorts of former parishioners, all sorts of people uh, on the, uh, the Zoom. So it, it's it's different, and and these folks don't feel that they can come to mass, and the people have told me on the lake, hey, how long are you going to do this? And I said, I'm going to do it until some priest asks me to cover them for a weekend. Uh, I, I got to let them take priority over this. So they're doing different things. Mass on the air, blah, blah, blah. They, they've made arrangements for, for this Sunday. But for the folks who are looking at it right now, say they don't feel comfortable coming here, that's painful. That's a different type of pain. That's a different type of suffering. But for you, for us, who are here, and then if you want us to be able to receive body of Christ, Amen. The body of Christ. You know, my sister and brother-in-law. My brother-in-law told me he was going and he was asked that his parish come back and go lecture this morning. So that was going to be the first morning for Jack to go back to his parish church and, and to lecture there. Uh, I don't know if my sister Tina was going to go along. She's a nurse. She's 78. She still was still practicing as a surgical nurse. And they kind of like don't invite her back anymore because you can't say you can't come here because you're too old. You can't, you can't say, you, you know, you're a prime candidate for, for the COVID-19. COVID you can't say that. Human resources won't allow you because they just, they just don't invite her back. So I don't know if she will go to church because of her, her, her nursing or not. It's a different suffering. And the folks who I'm looking at right now, that's, it's hard for them. We have the luxury in a few moments to receive Jesus, the body of Christ. Jesus Help us to deal with all the strains and all the stresses within our family, out, our jobs, whatever's going on in your life, that as you come to receive Jesus this morning, would you say to him, you know, help me deal with whatever my challenges are. And yet you continue to try to do your will in whatever that is, whatever our lifestyle, whatever our vocation. Go to our God then this morning uh, with this statement of our faith. I believe in the one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in the Church, I confess one baptism for the sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, and in faith we, we go to our God. Um, we go to our God with our own petitions and needs and things that are on our hearts and minds. Um, that the church um, will serve as a model, leading us to take up Christ's cross, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world policy makers will approach their mission with mindfulness of the need of global peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students and teachers returning to school, I'm not sure what you're doing in this county, whether you're going virtual or person to person, but wherever we are this year, this whole nine, ten month period that's ahead of us, that we'll approach these challenges uh, with love, of learning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who find it hard to trust their neighbors, we'll work toward a dialogue of mutual respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Ben, our pastor, that uh, he will have successful surgery tomorrow, and I pray that he will rehab, take time to heal, because this, this, this surgery will take time. So for him and for patience with, with his healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Yesterday at 11 o'clock in the morning at St. Patrick's Parish in Louisville, 18 deacons were ordained. Um, where I was last night, there they are receiving a deacon uh, in Kendall, Kentucky. Um, and uh, for these 18 men and their wives who have studied and for five years, that they will serve our church and, and continue to bring life and vitality, even in their setbacks and losses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Do we know the intention? I'm sorry I didn't check it uh, before Mass. I'm not sure where Father Ben puts his beard. Does anybody know? I don't know if it's on the front. I passed it up here. Okay. Um, right hand. Right hand side. Right hand side. Right hand This is for you, the people of St. Ambrose and St. Ignatius and St. Clair. So Mass is for our, our three parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, accept our, our efforts, accept our prayer here this morning. Give it to you always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless uh, you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, worship in the hand, let it become for us our spiritual food. Bless you, God, forever. Let's pray that this meal and our gathering here this morning, that these prayers will be found acceptable to God the Father and Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We pray to glory in his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. May this sacred offering, O oh God, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, O God, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal One. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the burden, and by the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead he gave us eternal life. And so, to the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, to all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <clears throat> God, who is 
there with Jeremiah. It's the same God who's there with Peter. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the verse of honor from every evil, grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all extreme anxiety that so often comes our way. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, your power, our glory, yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin and our brokenness, but rather here this morning look upon the faith of your church, the faith of each one of us gathered here. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. Just take a moment, share that sign of peace.
people who were not able to be with us this morning. Um, we would very, very deeply like to be here and to receive Jesus in sacraments. Oh God, look upon them this morning. Let them be reassured of the unique spiritual grace they receive by attending this Mass electronically and virtually. Uh, we pray for them and we are so grateful for the luxury and the privilege to be here ourselves and to receive your son Jesus in the mystery of this, of this sacrament. Bless them, don't let them get discouraged. Let them know of your love and to hear the word of God and be nourished and to be blessed by this spiritual grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 